This video was possible with the help of the Wolf of YouTube. Enjoy! The key objectives of the selection process are to find individuals who are going to be successful commando operators in Australia and overseas. What we're looking for now is that guy, no matter what happens, he's going to keep going. You've got to have that sort of internal hunger and that ambition to be there at the end. Physically, they just wear you right down, so you're at your worst, and they want to see how you're behaving, how you cope with situations then. The confidence fades, and you see exactly who that person is. We take a trainee who's been selected for his attributes, and we train him to be a commando. Your heart rate was up, you were sweating, you are nervous because you didn't want to make the wrong decision. You know, you've, you've been shot, but the world doesn't do it to stop, you know, you can't just reload, reboot. After nearly 10 months of complex and rigorous training, the candidates are still not qualified commandos. Commandos are an amphibious unit. For that reason, we run a, an amphibious course. A lot of our tasks revolve around operating in and around the, uh, the sea, the rivers. For that reason, uh, we do a lot of our training in amphibious operations. It's immensely difficult to swim in any situation, let alone open water, with uh, all your combat gear, with your boots, uh, with your helmet, with, uh, with a weapon as well, trying to preserve that because at the end of the day, that weapon is going to preserve your life. So trying to do that, approach the shore in a tactical manner and to put your fears aside if there is any, is a very arduous task. The regiments only accept the best and as they approach the final stages of the reinforcement training cycle, these men are aching to be worthy of wearing the coveted Commando Beret. So the training we do, it's all about conditioning. It's all about giving guys an experience that they can take away, put it into their bank and recall it later on when it really gets tough. So the exercises that we do are all about uh, giving the guys the self-belief that no matter what gets thrown at them, that they can keep going, uh, no matter what the circumstance. Australian commandos are trained in amphibious operations, so they need to be able to work comfortably in water as well as on land. 
Throughout the reinforcement cycle, the trainees are, are still assessed against the commando attributes. At any time, they uh, show a failure in, in any one of the seven commando attributes, then they are, uh, stand to be removed from the reinforcement cycle. Today, the candidates will be tested on a combination of skill sets that they've been instructed upon over the past few months. But it will be the resolve of the candidate that gets them through today's final test. As part of the swimmer assault drill, they've been inserted into the ocean and have now made their way to shore, where they will conduct a short range reconnaissance along the coastline. Without tenacity and determination, their journey may end on this beach. I think resolve something that probably can't be built up. I think, in my opinion, you either have it or you don't. And it's how it can be brought out of you. I think resolve to a commando is pretty simple. It's the guy who has seen his mates die in front of him and yet picks himself up off the ground and then continues to fight against the enemy. You'll find that it's those individuals that um, have resolve that will be able to um, continue with the fight and continue uh, through long hours and, and days and nights of stressful, physically and mentally challenging conditions. It means to keep going and never quit to do your best at all times and don't accept anything else. There's guys who have uh, experienced, you know, the horrors of war up close and personal and yet will, will continue to uh, help their teammates along, uh, go through the grief and processing and, and still be ready to walk out the, the door the next day on another mission. When on operations, a commando is required to show precise judgment, self-discipline and resolve. Today, the candidates will be tested for these attributes. A sudden ambush forces the candidates to adapt their tactical skills so that they can effectively combat the threat. Without the high ground advantage, they're forced to withdraw to an alternate position. Instructors review and assess the judgment and tactics displayed by the candidates as well as their management of supporting assets. So we use training aids such as flashbangs and smoke grenades to practice our drills. The only thing we can't replicate in training is having live rounds coming back at us. And unfortunately, that's what happens in war. The logistics of conducting an amphibious operation are far more complicated than those on most other assignments. The variable factors concerning the tides, swell, weather and currents influence the approach, combat equipment and extraction techniques of commando amphibious operations. We conduct uh, advanced force operations. This could be the seizing of seaports, uh, of installations along the coastal fringes. Anywhere in the, in the littoral environment is where you could find a commando uh, mission or operation. Working in a cold, wet environment you certainly have to be tough to be able to endure just the physical conditions. A small advanced reconnaissance team have attempted to push inland. They've encountered a large threat force that intelligence has not anticipated. 
and are now required to withdraw and find a new landing point. It's exciting and thrilling to achieve a specific objective when you've been through such a rigorous selection process, when you have trained so hard to find yourself in a situation that is incredibly testing um, against fierce opposition. You have to utilise all those skills to come out the other side of that and achieve a positive effect that is for the greater good and in Australia's you know, national interest. With more threat forces arriving, it is critical that the team works closely together to ensure no one is left behind and that sufficient firepower is accurately massed to achieve a clean break. It is exciting and I think we find ourselves pleased when we get to the end of, uh, end, the end of a mission where everything's come together like that and then we have to put that aside and move on and, and start to focus on the next job. Training for weeks in an amphibious environment is both gruelling and dangerous. The ocean is unpredictable by nature and conditions at sea can often be challenging or even life-threatening. Swimming in, in combat equipment uh, in deep water, it's, it's one of the hardest things you'll do if you're doing it for a, for a long period of time. This exposure to nature's elements and stressful conditions will serve as a foundation of experience for the candidates for potential operational deployments in the future. We want them to be exposed to as many things in training before they go overseas to war. So when it comes to doing their job, when it comes to someone shooting at them, and when it comes to them achieving their mission, they've done it, they've practiced it, they've rehearsed it, and their training will get them through. If they pass this final course, they're likely to be assigned to a commando company where they will prepare for potential operational deployments as a qualified Australian commando. As an instructor, it's, it's a rewarding experience. You, you're taking a raw product and you're moulding it into a, a, a warrior. You look back at the end of the cycle when you give these guys their berets and uh, it's, it's a reward in itself because you're making a judgement that these guys will work with you in a year's time on operations and you're putting your hand on your heart and saying, this guy is right to work with me anytime, anywhere, any place. After 10 months of intense training and precise instruction, a small group have proven that they have what it takes to be an Australian commando. They are absorbed into the unit and assigned to a company. They're still not fully ready as commandos, but they're so close they can taste it. Here, they face their final test. Full mission profile activities demand that candidates demonstrate their full range of skills and knowledge that they have accumulated over the past months. Instructors must be certain that they can perform at a meticulous level during an operational scenario. It is 8 a.m. and the commandos are rehearsing a full mission profile. The uh, trainees will use a variety of live fire and non-lethal training ammunition or simunition. Uh, this replicates uh, the two-way range concept that uh, we try and uh, give the guys as much exposure uh, to replicate operational conditions. This mission training activity has been in planning for some time. Over the last few weeks, every conceivable detail has been factored and prepared for. But on the day, the execution phase will take less than an hour to carry out. For many of the candidates, this may be the last time that they will face a threat group that is only armed with blanks. I think leading up to the first time you ever get shot at, there's a bit of an anticipation, like how will I manage myself under gunfire? Um, you don't want to let your, your teammates down. And then I think the first time you ever get shot at, I think it's a, it's a massive adrenaline rush. You sort of try and try and sort of focus on the task at hand, but it's, it's sort of scary and exciting at the same time. To sort of know that somebody could be aiming at you is, is, 
It's daunting, but it's, it's, I guess it's part and parcel of the job. Every, every time you sort of get shot at after that, there's always that adrenaline there, but I think you become a little bit more focused and a little bit more direct in your approach into sort of taking it to the enemy. Even though it is only a rehearsal, the full mission profile is regarded with as much gravity and seriousness as an actual assault. Extremely detailed orders and instructions are issued across the entire training force element. Uh, during a commando mission, we have the ability to rapidly change from conducting offensive operations through to performing medical duties. We also have the ability to do key leadership engagements all within the same village or the same area. Our attributes and our training allows us to rapidly respond to any of these situations and quickly affect the situation and render help or alternatively neutralise the threat as it presents. When you're in that environment, there's a, you know, it's not totally conscious thinking, but you need to be aware of what's going on around you all the time, and so there's a, there is a lot that's going on that you need to process quickly and, and adjust what your, your actions accordingly. Despite the fact that this group have now been assigned to the 2nd Commando Regiment, instructors still monitor their actions closely. The continual development and assessment of candidates does not cease with the reinforcement cycle's conclusion. I'm looking for the guy that does the little things right. I'm looking for a guy that uh, is checking his arcs, making sure there's no threat, making sure his safety catch is applied correctly. If there's a threat, he engages a threat, he neutralises that threat, he then gives the communication and the appropriate calls to his teammates. The guy that's uh, covering his teammates' backs when they're, they're crossing an obstacle. I'm looking for the guy that's prepared to help his teammates to climb over a wall. I'm looking for the guy who's going to cover the guys across the open space. I'm looking for the guy who's going to move into the position to provide cover for his teammates when they make entry into a room. I'm looking for the guy who's ready to render first aid if there's a, an incident or a casualty. And all, all the way through, we're looking for the guy who's going to show some natural leadership. If he's not uh, being told what to do, he's the guy that's going to go ahead, take his own initiative and get the job done. Instructors are aware of their responsibility to ensure that the commando candidate has become highly trained and exceptional in the full range of their required skill sets. The responsibility in making such an assessment is enormous. In just a matter of weeks, they can be placed on the front line of tactical assaults or deployed offshore in a volatile and contested war zone. To be successful in this style of warfare, the candidates need to be more than just precisely skilled. They need to be exceptional. We're training our uh, reinforcements to be a, a commando, a warrior, a soldier who is going to do the best job that the government asks of him, that his nation asks of him. We're after a, a humble guy who wants to go home at the end of the day and say to his friends and family that he's proud to be a commando, he's proud to be in the Defence Force, and he thinks he's doing the right job. While on operation, an Australian commando carries huge responsibility. They must complete every mission with minimal disruption to the lives of the local communities and plan their missions in an attempt to avoid any collateral damage. During a, a mission where you have to work within the civilian populace, first and foremost, you've got to uh, focus on the mission at hand. That's the important thing. At the same time, though, you've got to take uh, into consideration what their needs or requests are. There is much that will confront these rookie commandos during a deployment overseas. Dealing with civilians and coping with the threat of injury and death often proves testing for those new to the unit. 
perhaps even more difficult to prepare for is the eventuality of potentially squeezing the trigger themselves. I guess there's probably no way to mentally prepare to take another person's life. Uh, I think at the end of the day, you got to count back on your training and when it comes down to either him or me, um, hopefully I'm better prepared at the end of the day to come home to my family. In the training cycle, it's iterative exposure. So we, we build and we build and we build and we make the training more and more realistic. As they become comfortable at one level, then we'll take them to the next. We've taken brand new soldiers straight off the reinforcement cycle, put them into combat operations in Afghanistan and they've performed exceptionally well because it, what they experienced the first time wasn't a surprise. For these candidates, the journey to achieve the coveted Commando Beret is finished. They will make a commitment to their country, their unit and themselves. Before an Australian commando is deployed on operations, they've endured more than 12 months of intensive assessments and focused initial training. Throughout this training, the primary objective is to ensure that they're prepared to make the right decision each and every time they're called to action so that their life and the life of their mate is protected. Every commando reinforcement knows that throughout that cycle, he's training for, for operations, he's training for war. So the training he does throughout the reinforcement cycle is providing him the best preparation for him to go to war the moment that he's given his Green Beret and is posted into a commando unit. We select, train and prepare these men for operations. So once we arrive on the ground, then uh, all the training um, really comes into its own and that's where uh, the guys need to use everything they've been taught to, uh, to get themselves prepared and then to go out and to do the job and to execute missions and do the best job they can to uh, bring all their teammates back alive. An Australian commando is trained and prepared for specific operational requirements. Their recent experience in Afghanistan, a country that has occupied global attention since September 11, 2001, has been a formidable time for the commando regiments. Tasked with supporting the establishment of a democratic government, they've worked closely with Afghan security forces to help disable terrorist and insurgent networks. In, in Afghanistan, and in, in Iraq, and even in, in places like the Timor or Solomons, it's a, a complex operating environment. As, as, a, as an instructor, once you've completed the training of Guy and he's, he's now a qualified commando, you know that he's potentially going to be sent overseas within two to three months' time. It's, it's your duty of care and that you make sure that he's as best prepared as you can possibly make him. You don't want that guy to fail because you've trained him the wrong way. You don't want him to jeopardise himself or his teammates or potentially yourself because you could find yourself in, as an instructor in a year's time back in the commando regiments and leading training uh, and fighting alongside these guys. You, don't, you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your teammates that this guy is, is, uh, is best prepared as, as, as he can be. I take my duties as an instructor very seriously. I don't want to send anyone to a commando regiment who's going to jeopardise his teammates' safety and the safety of my uh, work colleagues and brothers. Operational environments such as the Middle East have been a focus for the Australian commandos for the past few years. Harsh and unforgiving environments require the commandos to maintain their resolve under exceptional and at times extremely dangerous circumstances. So I guess walking through a uh, through a building or through anywhere with a with a loaded weapon surrounded by your teammates and and getting presented threat and no threat targets, sort of heart rate is elevated. You want to you don't want to make the wrong decision and shoot the wrong person. It's quite daunting and, and something that 
everybody has to go through and it's part of the training and once you're in and you've sort of done enough times it becomes second nature but it's a massive learning curve that you have to sort of try and come to grips with. They will be ready for such a deployment as the operational lessons learned after years of extensive combat operations in Afghanistan have been incorporated into the courses of the commando reinforcement training cycle. During the months of an operational deployment in varying locations and conditions, the commandos must rely on the attributes that have been hammered into them since the onset of selection. During combat, they'll be reliant on their foundations of determined resolve and toughness, but more often than not, they'll also be required to exercise self-discipline and adaptability, as a commando's role can often involve liaising with civilian communities or the local authority. We need to train for the environment that we're going into, and the current example is Afghanistan. So during our pre-deployment build-up for Afghanistan, we will focus on dealing with, uh, dealing with the heat. We'll look at some basic language training for the guys so that they can deal with the local nationals, deal with the civilians and uh, insurgents alike, because the guys need to be ready to go out and, and do the job for real and face those life or death situations. During any operation, a commando may need to move precisely and seamlessly through the full spectrum of tasks, from peacekeeping and humanitarian support to direct combat with armed threat groups. Each of these varying tasks requires specific skills and judgment as they're exposed to conditions that are often disturbing and dangerous. A notable example is an operational task carried out in Afghanistan during the Shah Wali Kot offensive on June 2010. In the northern Kandahar province, a series of daring daylight helicopter raids deep inside enemy territory were successful in destabilizing the local insurgent networks and identifying and drawing in as many of the region's Taliban commanders as possible. By night, Australian commandos were then inserted into attack positions within an area known to be used as a Taliban supply route, only to find themselves heavily surrounded by morning. Outnumbered and under sustained and brutal attack, the commandos managed to overcome the insurgents and force a Taliban retreat into the nearby village of Tizak. This set the conditions for a coalition clearance of the area and resulted in heavy insurgent casualties. For these commando regiments, the success of this mission reinforced their solid reputation as an adaptable, dependable and fierce force within the region. We need to operate in a, uh, an environment where we are constantly learning, um, always evolving. So uh, we want individuals in this organisation who demonstrate sound judgment in what we do. The judgment is one of our key attributes also because uh, a commando operator is going to be faced with situations where they need to you know, make quick decisions and demonstrate sound judgment in discriminating between um, what could potentially be terrorists and what could be hostages. And uh, those decisions that have to be made in a split second are, um, are vitally important, obviously. So uh, we will assess the judgment of an individual and make sure that they have you know, that, uh, that quality. Solid judgment is critical on deployment. Without it, and given the complex tasks often presented to commandos, the consequences or errors could be fatal. While in deployment, one of the roles for Australian commandos will often involve teaching military capabilities to the local security forces. In Afghanistan, the Australians work closely with the Afghan security forces, conducting vehicle mounted patrols with their partner force, as well as providing advice on weapons handling and marksmanship. Commandos provide a number of roles to the uh, Afghan National Security Forces it involves leading, teaching and mentoring uh, the soldiers through in the Kandaks or also within the uh, training environment. We work side by side with the Afghans on a day to day basis. We train, we teach them how to uh, provide their own security. 
and uh, we work with them as, as we would with any other uh, coalition partner. وانو چې خوښ نه وای کله بیا کارو سره په وینو خوښ دي په دا تلونګان او په دا شان دوی ډېر خوشحاله دي So we have guys that are mentoring and training uh, the Afghanistan police. We have uh, individuals going to the range, uh, you know, on the base and, and uh, you know, improving their own skills. But essentially, uh, we need the guys to be to be focused on what they're doing and always preparing for the next job. So that uh, you know, when it comes time to get on the helicopter or to you know, get in the vehicle and, and drive to where we're going, that uh, the guys are prepped and ready. They have everything they need. They're, they're mentally prepared to get out there and, uh, and do the best job they can for themselves and for their teammate. Across the globe, many insurgent networks are well-funded. With their organisations often backed by an illegal flow of weapons and drugs stored in hidden caches throughout their operating region. In Afghanistan, buried within the landscape itself, lurks a far deadlier threat. One of the threats to the lives of Australian commandos are improvised explosive devices, IEDs. On many occasions, the commandos have uncovered IED factories, sometimes containing hundreds of components for making explosive devices. IEDs are insidious and indiscriminate as they target civilians as well as military personnel. What we're doing today is um, we're taking the guys through some basic route search, also how to conduct a threat assessment. The skills are important to them because it'll allow them to safely conduct a route search. It'll give them the confidence as well to, to conduct the drills properly without injuring themselves or injuring any equipment. We've placed out a couple of different types of IDs on this training lane and they've found everything so far. So there's stuff out there that, that will go crack. I have great confidence that they'll be able to conduct these jobs, these type of jobs when we leave. So they'll be able to conduct the full spectrum of search. The biggest threat that we have in country are IEDs. You've got more chance of hitting an IED than getting shot at. Australian commandos are a group of like-minded men. When faced with life-threatening danger, and the shocking realities of war, their intimate mateship and bond becomes even more important. Their training gives them the skills to move forward, but their camaraderie and trust in their mate gives them the courage they need to stand strong when faced with an extreme threat. For one team, this relationship was tested in the most significant way when Australian commandos were critically wounded by an IED while under fire. One mission which uh, had you know, a great impact on all of us was in 2011. The guys demonstrated incredible resolve. Several of the members moved forward and dragged their wounded teammates to safety despite incoming fire. I also had other members of, uh, of my platoon who immediately volunteered to move forward and assist with the security and assist with getting that team to safety knowing that the area they were going into likely had other improvised explosive devices, other IEDs laid, and they were able to push forward and to clear the way, to secure the site, and to uh, bring all of that team back to safety, away from um, the insurgents who were you know, fiercely defending the area that we were, we were in. But to see the guys then regroup, uh, to um, assist you know, other members who were also wounded, and you know, watch everyone pull together and demonstrate their teamwork was, uh, was incredible. I think because of the attributes of the guys, a lot of other lives were saved that day. Operating effectively in a war zone demands more than just guts. To continually stand up against the threat of death and injury, 
requires a foundation of support and trust in those who will stand beside you. You still have mates outside the army, that, but you tend to hang around with guys at work more because you don't need to explain why it is you do things and what it, because everyone's been through it and done it. You know, because my, my mates that know me that, you know, last seven years and that, they still say, oh, so what do you, when you're in a situation, do you, like, they want to play Call of Duty, and what are you in this situation, what do you do here? It's like, you just, they don't even know what it's like to just do basic training, let alone anything else. So it's so hard to, I don't know, I find it hard to try and get that across to people. I think going through your mind before a deployment is you want to do the best job that you can over there and you want to you want to do the best thing for your mates around you. I think you have you have in the back of your mind that you might not come home and you want to sort of prepare the best you can for that um, and make sure everything is sort of covered off in that respect. Commando operators are well aware that each time they enter the fray, it could be their last. Such thoughts are not a hindrance to the mission, but rather fuel for their determination to do the best job that they are capable of. Above all, commandos value honour and trust within the unit. The team is everything. The mateship that is shared between commandos forms the framework for much of the unit's success abroad. Everything is about your team and your mates because we're all very like-minded people. I think we're all very, very similar. It's pretty scary how similar we all actually are. And the fear of failing your mates is always there. You don't want to be that guy who lets the team down, who makes that stupid decision to, that could put your team in jeopardy. I think to be there for your mates is, all, is a massive thing. Mateship is everything. For the newly trained, experiencing the realities of close combat engagement would make most question their decision to enlist. And it's not easy, it's tough. You know, we don't even give a shit if it's going to be hard. You know it's going to be hard. Everything worthwhile isn't going to be easy. But these men are commandos, and they don't frighten easily. To do what they do, they must be motivated by more than just self-preservation. They must be willing to put a greater cause ahead of themselves, an ideal to strain, suffer and fight for. How you go out there every day is, is through, through a love of your, of your mates around you and it's a, through a love of the job and trying to make a difference in, in what you're doing over there. I think what makes it worth it in the long run is uh, it gives me a great deal of pride to sort of to do something for more than myself, uh, to serve my country and, and to be one of those people who stand up for your country in a time of need. Commandos are volunteers. They choose to undergo the training. When required to do so, they will deploy at short notice to locations often great distances from their home and family to help others in less fortunate circumstances. In Afghanistan, we've had a lot more of the support around us to allow us to conduct combat operations. But every time we go out into the environment, we're fighting once again inside village complexes. We're fighting often an unseen enemy who blends into the, the population. So it's never been clear and clean. And we've had both men and women out there under threat from improvised explosive devices, from direct fire, and we've been able to generate a good outcome for ourselves and for the people, particularly for in Afghanistan, for the stability of that nation. But like all these problems, it's not persistent unless you can stay there and, and maintain it. While medals and awards represent a distinguished honour for the commando regiments, they are also reminders of the significant loss. Since the forming of the 1st Commando Regiment in 1955, there have been many commandos who have lost their lives as a result of the arduous and dangerous training that is required to develop and maintain the commando capability.
In the last decade alone, 13 members of the 1st and 2nd Commando Regiments have been killed in action on deployment or in training when preparing for a deployment. Many more commandos have been seriously injured or wounded, of which many will never return to full duty. A number of defence and non-defence organisations are currently managing more than 150 serving or ex-service commandos who are currently seriously injured or ill as a direct result of their training or operational deployments. Welfare and enduring medical support for Australian military personnel and their families is critically important to the Army. There are a number of organisations that complement one another in providing the pillars in delivering the support. The Commando Welfare Trust was established to help complement the existing defence and non-defence organisations in providing support to the soldiers and their families. For those soldiers who will never make it back to their loved ones and country, their sacrifice is remembered and honoured by each and every Commando Beret worn now and in the future. Because we lost, lost three guys in three separate jobs and all of them, all of them affect you massively. You know it's on the cards but you never, you have that thing or maybe it won't ever happen to me and you never hope for it to be a mate and it's, it's shit to deal with it, it's, yeah. I think it rocks, rocks our small community pretty hard when, um, when it gets announced that one of us has been killed. We've lost quite a few of our mates, our commando brothers, and we find that the best way for us to honour their memory is to continue to do our job to the best of our ability, exactly the way they would want us to. An Australian commando is someone who's chosen to put the needs of his country and his mates above his own. A man with unwavering resolve and humility who can always be counted on.